Hello, this is Backwoods Brooks with another video. I have previously been off to college and that is one of the reasons why I have not uploaded a video in many months. But I actually brought you out to the forge today to show you remaking a Backwoods Brooks UFK or the utility fighting knife. I had shipped my own or my previous version out to Wyoming and it was lost in the US Postal Service so I need to replace it so I'm going to show you that right here right now and let's pick up the camera so right here in this tiny little shop I have the blade all traced out in this vise. The big one is the utility fighting knife. And I like to cut out the majority of my knives and then shape the bevel and any bends or angles that I might want to put in there with the forging process because it's a little bit more even that way. Oh, excuse me. I have very cramped quarters here and there's a lot of stuff in here. So for that I'm just going to use a simple 4 inch grinding wheel. It's one of the thin bladed versions and I find that they work phenomenally. I would previously have used a torch but that leaves a lot of bubbles and scrap metal just sitting on your edge that you have to remove with a grinder before you can actually forge with it or else you're forging lots of bumps. Okay, so we're ready. Eye protection and ear protection, always a must, especially when using a grinder because sparks fly and a grinder can get pretty loud. So what I'm just going to do for right now is start cutting this out right down this way and I'll cut out this little knife right here that I have pictured. I think it's going to be a a bigger version of my weasel. I think I'll call it the Pine Martin but that's sort of irrelevant right now. So let's get started. Let your wheel stop before moving. Or else you're going to have a problem. Okay. And this is shifting way too much in this old vise. So, make it a little bit tighter. As you can see, lots of sparks. But I'm going to cut you guys off, finish cutting down through here. I'm going to cut in a straight line all the way down to my curve, for I'm going to have my kukri belly in the front. And then uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, that's it ground out. I noticed a little bit that it looks almost like a Tom Brown. Yeah. Excuse me. Tom Brown Jr. Tracker Knife. 
but it will not look like that for long trust me it's gonna get a major facelift from that so it's all ground out I knocked off the burr with the grinding wheel now it's time for forging so what I'm gonna be using for the forge is an old grill it's just basically got a twir on it hooked up to a hair dryer super simple and it's just got some fire brick and uh, ash spread around a bunch of holes poked in a chunk of uh, channel and currently I'm trying out wood because of the really long chamber that I have to work with I can uh, burn long pieces of wood and turn them into charcoal while I am using the forge so far it's worked pretty well so I'm gonna get the forge rolling and then we will get on the road and I will pound some steel. Here's one of the great things I've found about using wood. Is you just stick your hardy in, grab yourself a hammer, and you can split your wood. If there's no knots in it, of course. Much safer than using an axe. Or a big knife for that matter. And it's so simple. Okay, the fire is rolling. I don't know if you can see the amount of smoke coming off of that very well, but uh, I set up a fan that helps pull some of that out. It's extremely loud, so I'm going to yell, and hopefully you can hear me when I have something to say. But I'm going to get it going because this is quite stifling. I also need to get my blower going. Okay, so I just turned on the blower. You can see the difference in how high the flames were from before and now. However, you can't really put too much in there right yet because you don't have that coal base. But I've got some charcoal, a little bit of charcoal, and all the wood that I have is primarily composed of softwoods. So it's going to turn into charcoal fairly fast. So I'm going to get it rolling and get ready to put some steel in it. So the first order of business is to bring this car spring up to temperature where we can bend it because it's got that curve in it. After that we can start bending the blade downward like a sickle so that we can uh, pound in the quote-unquote grind that it'll have right now it's just got to reach a red-hot temperature okay so the majority of that uh, bending will be done over the horn but first got to get a little bend in there first
this bra. 